What's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you how I like to check potential monocarions for clamp connections. If you don't know what a monocarion is, when you're breeding mushrooms you want to select single spore germinations. They will have hyphae that only contain one nuclei and that's called a monocarion. Uh, they often look like that on a plate after you streak it out. There's a few different ways of isolating them. I find streaking is the easiest way to do it. So you take a transfer off one of those single spore germinations and grow it out. And it can have a few different, few different looks to it. But it will always be tomentose. It will never go rhizomorphic. If it does, it's not a monocarion. It can grow in a few different ways as a monocarion. Sometimes they grow out weird. I don't know, this one may have made it in a few places, but the Pac-Man kind of mouth right there is pretty common for what, from what I've seen. And another characteristic of monocaryotic growth is it's extremely slow. If you take a monocaryon at the same time you take a dicaryon, the dicaryon will probably fill up the plate maybe a, a week faster than the mono. I'll make a video more in depth on actually isolating single spores and different techniques, but this video is just going to be a quick one on how I check for clamp connections on the mycelium. So what I like to do to get started is have a dicaryotic plate, as you can see, nice rhizomorphic growth. This was taken from a clone. I can guarantee it's dicaryotic. And I'll just put that on my scope just so I can... Uh, get a feel for what the clamp connections look like. If I haven't done this in a while, it, it just helps me helps me differentiate because when you're searching for monocarions, you're searching for the lack of something. So like you gotta spend like 10 minutes looking around and if you don't find anything, you just kinda have to assume. So it helps to train your eye on a dicarion just so you can spot clamp connections a little easier. And for this setup, you don't need a fancy microscope. I've had this one since middle school, I think. It goes up to 400x, but what I do is I keep it on 100x. This is 10x magnification and a 10x uh, optic. And what I do is uh, I just stick it on there with the with the light, and then I put my phone in telephoto mode. I use the zoom on my phone to increase it to like a 1,000x, and then I can see the hyphae really clearly. All right, so. On my phone, I like to go to More Pro Video, and from there you can you can choose which lens you want to use. I have a Samsung Galaxy, so I go to Telephoto. I place it in the in a 3D printed uh, microscope phone mount that I have. I'll I'll leave a link to where I found this in the description if you guys have a 3D printer yourself. And if there's enough interest, I might contact the designer of this and see if he'll license me to sell it on, on my website. So all, all I'm doing here is I put the plate on the stage like we had um, earlier and now you can see the uh, individual hyphae pretty clearly. This is 100x magnification remember and we're on telephoto mode so all you gotta do is zoom in to like 12x and there you go, you got a nice clear picture of the hyphae. And I'll just try to find a clamp connection just to see one. Oh, there's one right there. You see in these dicaryons you can normally find them pretty quickly. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll circle this in my recording. Uh, clamp connections are between hyphal cells there will be a division and between that division uh, there will be a clamp bridging the gap and that's that signifies that the mycelium has mated if you don't see that clamp then uh, the mycelium uh, has not mated I'm just gonna find one more example of a clamp connection it shouldn't take too long on dicaryons they're they're all over the place but on your monocaryons you should spend a good time uh, sampling to see them. So yep, there's 
uh, two more right there. Okay. Oh, I see a third one. Yep. So now you got a picture of what dicarions look like. I'll go ahead and put one of my possible monocarions on and just show you what it's like to, to hunt around a little bit. So what I do, I like to start with my zoom pretty far out to get a, a picture of the hyphae. And you want to go towards the edge so you get enough light going through it. Also, if your agar dish isn't relatively clear, this won't work super well. I've got a tutorial on how I make my agar. Uh, you can check it out. I'll leave it in the description. So yeah, I'll just search around and find a good location where I get... I feel like it's not dense enough that there's enough light to see the mycelium, but it's also dense enough that I can get a sample size. And what I'm really looking for is the division between the two cells. And like I said, this can take a long time. You want to spend a good amount of time on each sample just to make sure you don't see any clamp connections. So I'm going to adjust the shutter speed a little bit to brighten it up. This will make it a little blurrier though. Alright, from what I can tell that looks like a connection between cells and I don't see a clamp connection on it. So. I'm going to lean towards, this is probably a mono, but I'm going to continue looking and probably find maybe five or ten more connections like that. And if all of them appear to be lacking a clamp connection, then I can be pretty certain that this is a monocarion. There's something that, that kind of looks like it could be a clamp connection right there in the middle. Um, so I'm going to keep looking around. Yep, and this is basically how you do it. You just search around the plate. You want to be searching for where the two cells uh, meet, the two cells that make up the hyphae. Because if there's only one nuclei in it, there won't be a clamp connection. And if there's two nuclei, the clamp connection will be used to bridge the bridge the connection between the two cells and and move the nuclei. It looks like we got a couple right here that appear to be lacking clamp connections. So we'll add that to our tally. We've seen three, uh, three with no clamp connections and one potential clamp connection. So I'm gonna keep searching around. I wanna really... The larger your sample size, the better, really. And all we're going to do is keep searching around until I find some more uh, connections between the cells. There's a technical name for that. I'll, leave, I'll, put, a, I'll put a caption of it up. I'm, I'm kind of room temperature IQ if you haven't noticed. That kind of looks like a another one. We'll add that to the tally. There's four lacking clamp connections. So I'm I'm really hopeful that this is a mono because it it has a uh, tomentose growth and is growing really slowly. And it looks like the other monocarions that I've confirmed. So I'm I'm pretty sure it is. 
and that looks like another one lacking a clamp connection. So yeah, all I'm doing is going up and down with the focus and scanning for uh, possible connections. Then what I like to do is I like to turn the plate, go to the other side of it, and just search around a little. Because it can mate on one side and not get to the other side. So you can have monokaryotic and dikaryotic growth going on at the same time. But if you just search around the majority of the plate, you should get a, get a good clue. Just like this, there, I see another connection that is lacking a clamp connection. So we're starting to confirm this mono. I, I might be comfortable calling this a monokaryon pretty soon. So we'll just keep looking around the plate. But you see how tedious this is. It just takes, takes time and you just gotta look around. And it's what it is. I like using my phone in this mount because it's kind of tedious holding one eye closed looking through your aperture and you can't uh, do this 100x trick. You would need a higher magnification and you'd have to plate out the mycelium. Yeah, there's, a, there's another one that appears to be lacking a clamp connection. So I've lost track of the tally, but I think we're looking pretty good. I might might go ahead and try to run this as a mono. Once I uh, confirm that it is a mono, I just go ahead and I put a check mark on it. So I know I checked it. And you see I had M question mark because I, it was a potential mono and I just confirmed it. And that, that's my notation, you can do whatever works for you. Make sure you check out my link tree. I've got all my social media there and I've got a couple ways you can support me. I've got some merchandise with a bunch of cool designs. Dogs with mushrooms coming out of their head and stuff, you know. And I also have uh, my microscopy samples for sale. All right, guys, I appreciate your support. Make sure you drop a comment and a uh, subscription if you want to see more content. I've got a whole bunch of series that I'm working on. I thought I'd just release this quick video.